Hello, my name is Pascal Bossard. I'm working at the Cochin Institute in Paris, France, and I am a member of the oncogenesis of the digestive epithelia team led by the Dr. Christine Perret, who discovered more than 20 years ago mutation in the beta catenin genes leading to the development of hepatocarcinomas. And now, on behalf of my cursor, I am very pleased to present you a study that I led and has been recently published in GUT on the metabolic reprogramming of beta-catenin mutated hepatocarcinomas. Hepatocellular carcinoma are the most frequent primary liver cancers. They rank as the second leading cause of cancer-related deaths as current treatment remain poorly effective. They are mostly inoperable, approved drugs have very modest effect, and they have a high recurrence rate. Genomic approaches have allowed HEC classification into two large subclasses, one proliferative subclass with high chromosomal instability and an aggressive phenotype. Some of these tumors can be steatotic, but they are mostly associated with TP53 or exin one mutation. The second group is associated with activating mutation in CTNNB1, leading to a beta-catenin pathway activation. They present a chromosomic stability, a lower proliferation index, they are quite differentiated, they are cholestatic and not steatosic. Therefore, here we have two different subclasses presenting a very different metabolic morphotype. Following this observation, we then went on to investigate the metabolic adaptations triggered by a beta-catenin oncogenic activation in hepatocyte and asked the part played by these changes in beta-catenin-dependent tumorigenesis. So for that purpose, we use a mouse model with an inducible liver-specific beta-catenin activation in few hepatocytes, leading after several months to the development of beta-catenin-activated HCC. We did metabolic fluxes analysis on explants from this tumor or the normal surrounding tissues. For years, it was thought that tumor metabolism was solely relying upon glucose to meet the tumor demands on macromolecules or energy for their growth. But when looking at glucose metabolism in beta-catenin-activated HCC, we did not see any differences in the glycolytic flux or its oxidation compared to normal tissue. On the other hand, when we look at lipid metabolism, we observe a robust induction of fatty acid oxidation coupled with increased ketogenesis, and this could explain the lack of steatosis observed in beta-catenin HCCs. We then assessed the expression of a fatty acid oxidation program in an annotated human dataset and observed an 85% of CTNNB1 mutated HCC were gathered in a single cluster expressing this program at the highest level. We confirm these results using, this time, an independent cohort of human HCC mutated or non-mutated for CTNNB1. So beta-catenin-activated HCC are running on fatty acids, but is this peculiar metabolic profile acquired during the transformation process, or is it a cell autonomous driving force of this transformation? To figure this out, we look this time at the metabolic profile of beta-catenin-activated hepatocytes prior to the transformation, just a few days after this activation. And what we found out is just upon beta-catenin activation, hepatocytes are already reprogramming their metabolism toward an increased fatty acid oxidation. This metabolic reprogramming is therefore preceding the transformation. We then found out in beta-catenin-activated hepatocytes an increased expression of PPA-alpha, one of the main transcriptional activators of the fatty acid oxidation program. And using this time a double knockout mice lacking PPA-alpha, we demonstrated that the increased fatty oxidation observed in beta-catenin-activated hepatocytes was under the control of this transcription factor. So, the increased fatty acid oxidation under the control of PPA-alpha is preceding the transformation, but we can now ponder about the part played by this metabolic reprogramming in the oncogenic process. We then look out at beta-catenin tumorigenesis in the context of a decreased beta-oxidation in the PPA-alpha knockout mice, and found out, in a liver with a defective beta-oxidation, a strong decrease in tumor penetrance and tumor load. Moreover, tumor initiation was delayed by four months. We then looked at the consequences of a direct inhibition of fatty acid oxidation on beta-catenin-activated tumor development, feeding the mice with a diet containing an inhibitor. After three weeks of treatment, the tumor growth rate of the treated tumor-bearing mice dropped to less than 3%, showing that pharmacological inhibition of fatty acid oxidation was able to efficiently block beta-catenin-induced HEC development. 
So overall, our results demonstrate that fatty acid oxidation play a critical role in beta-catenin HCCs at all steps of tumor development, including initiation and progression. This study has been the PhD thesis work of Nadia Seni. And I would like to thank now all my wonderful co-authors for their help. Thank you for your attention.